Attorney Panilla, Chairman Alandoni, may plano ba na mag-declare? May plano ba na mag-declare na ceasefire ulit ang tulad na mangyari yung last year? I think we'll be talking about it if the assessment, if the ceasefires have been successful, then it will have a positive impact for the possibility of future ones. So we'll be getting the reports from the ground, from the revolutionary forces throughout the Philippines to check uh, how well was it uh, carried out and all the possibilities that uh, they could recommend also if that could be done again in order to improve the atmosphere for the continuation of the formal peace talks. Chair yeah. Padilla, yeah, we will always be ready to declare a ceasefire. Any ceasefire that lessens violence, the incidence of violence, will always be good. I think not only for both sides, but for the entire Philippine people. So we encourage, you know, and uh, we have positive assessments of the past ceasefire in December. We hope to have again the positive assessment this one week uh, ceasefire, and hopefully again for the future ceasefire. Chair Alandoni, any comment on the re uh, arrest of uh, Alan Nasminez on the eve of the resumption of the formal peace talks? Well, Alan Asminez is uh, a valued NDF consultant and is covered by the protection of the Joint Agreement on Safety and Immunity Guarantees. So we are demanding that his release be carried out as soon as possible and such release will be of positive uh, value towards the continuation of the peace negotiations. So we are making it known, with also through a press release, that uh, Alan Nasminez is a very valued uh, NDF consultant and a document for identification holder and should be uh, released in accordance with the JASI. Attorney Padilla. Well, I think uh, when he was arrested, uh, there was no document at the time no, of the arrest that he was able to present. Uh, neither did he, did he present a letter of acknowledgement from the government, but just the same, uh, we will try and verify whether he is indeed uh, a part of the JASI, and when so done, and when so accomplished, uh, we'll act accordingly. We confirm that he is an yeah. NDF consultant with a document for identification holder, and even if he is not holding it at the moment, he would still be in possession legally of it. If he left it in his house, or his residence, or with his family, uh, that document for identification is still his, it's still in his possession. It is valid and it should be, uh, it should be covered by the protection of the system. Yeah. What's your message to the Filipino people para sa darating na isang linggo ng inyong pag-uusap? Well, ang message of the Filipino people is to carry their aspirations and interests to fight for their uh, 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 aspirations and their rights and that uh, they, of course, we know are not weary of struggling for their rights and they will continue and we in the negotiating uh, panel will bring their interest and we hope that these uh, uh, negotiations that will uh, address the roots of the armed conflict will bring about a lasting benefit by uh, addressing their aspirations for uh, their uh, basic fundamental rights. Like land reform and national nationalization, economic sovereignty, justice, and genuine democracy for the peasants, workers, women, youth, indigenous people, and all of the sectors of the Filipino people. Yeah, well, we have high hopes. Uh, this is the resumption of the formal talks after six years of impasse and after uh, 24 years of negotiation and a 40 year uh, long insurgency. No? So we have high hopes that this will be a start the beginning of a real honest-to-goodness process for a just and equitable peace settlement between both parties that will lead to concrete benefits for our people. And we are hopeful that this will be, that we will remain focused uh, on these efforts and that we will accomplish this in a matter of, hopefully within three years, maybe less, maybe much, much less. Thank you. Mr. Yunan, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Uh, well, we are uh, conscious and aware of the conditions and difficulties and sufferings of the Filipino people and we carry their aspirations with us and we are inspired by their continuing relentless struggle for their rights for true justice and peace.
last month you demanded the release of 14 or 17 political prisoners, uh, preferably before the resumption of the talks. And Mr. Padilla, you said you would do everything you could to, to, to make them, to make it happen. And we well, did everything we could. Well, in, well we did everything we could. Uh, we facilitated the, the passport or exit visas of, uh, I think, three or four of their current consultants now. Uh, we are still working on the on the case uh, involving Ipong, and we're still reviewing the other incidents or the other cases. So I think we've done our utmost best to try and uh, live up to our uh, agreements, to our uh, uh, concessions. No? And, and I, I think uh, it's just a matter of time also that we are also reviewing the other cases. We acknowledge uh, the achievements done by the GPH panel, Tony uh, Pablito Sanidad, for the uh, making it possible the participation of Randa Rechanis and also uh, of uh, Rafael Baidosis in these negotiations. We know that the GBH panel and Tony Sanidad uh, are working uh, very hard to get the expeditious release. And uh, as the, we had agreed last time, there will be continuous efforts to get the release of these uh, NDFP consultants before the second round of formal talks. We are also uh, we are bringing up uh, also the effective uh, steps needed for the release of about 350 political prisoners. We appreciate the uh, statement made by the GPH panel that they are in sympathy and support for efforts uh, of organizations towards a principled amnesty of the political prisoners as there was also amnesty for the 400 military uh, personnel. Does it make the negotiations uh, difficult that political prisoners has become such a big issue in, uh, now in the beginning? Well, I don't think it should be such a big issue because, you know, the overwhelming majority of these political prisoners have been uh, arrested and detained under the Arroyo regime. And so the accountability for this is with the Arroyo regime. Now with the new Aquino regime uh, saying that uh, they want a new beginning and also that uh, they see the, the example given by the mother of the new president and also the possibilities of having this kind of reconciliation, it should be a task and the opportunity that is there that would improve actually the peace negotiations when this is being carried out uh, in consonance with the uh, various organizations and also the peace negotiations. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a fine opportunity uh, for both sides to work for and that will be a positive uh, achievement that will help uh, in the future of the peace negotiations. Yeah, uh, human rights, political prisoners have always been an important subject even for the Philippine government. Uh, and we are working hard no, not to, uh, well, not to worsen the problem. In, in effect, we are also saying that it's good that there's an acknowledgement that uh, these violations were made during the Arroyo regime, and that uh, I think even in the Aquino regime now, uh, there is hardly any uh, incident of forced uh, disappearances or extrajudicial uh, exclusion. But let me say also that we are focused on trying to come up with solutions to the armed conflict. And that will take, uh, that will mean talking about the economic, social economic reforms, political constitutional reforms, as well as the other substantive agreements. So we want to stay focused with that. And I think we had an agreement also with the NDF to put important matters such as the uh, political prisoners on a side table mechanism, not making it less important, but uh, staying focused on the main agenda of our agreements in order to meet our uh, our goal of attaining just and equitable settlement. I, I think the release of political prisoners is a very important issue yeah. because, for one, these political prisoners have struggled <laughs> together with so many others against the Arroyo regime, against even the Marcos regime. So they deserve uh, to be uh, given the protection of the agreement on human rights and international humanitarian law. They are also victims of trumped up charges filed against them. So that means the carrying out of their release 
is uh, part of uh, duty and obligation coming from the agreement and as the Oslo Joint Statement number 1 of February 2004 says, it is also an act of magnanimity. So we, we take these two sides and uh, so we, we consider it uh, uh, a very important issue because these uh, people uh, deserve really, uh, because of their struggle, their uh, valiant struggle against the Marcos regime, against the Arroyo regime, and being victims of trumped up charges, they deserve to be released in accordance with the agreement and be as a goodwill and confidence building measure as an act of magnanimity. You, you've both been here before. Yes. Uh, what makes it different this time? What makes it different this time is I think uh, we are pursuing the substantive agreements uh, for once. No? Uh, the social economic reforms, political constitutional reforms, after more than six years, an impasse. No? So I think there is a focus on, on that, of course, while, while restating as well the importance of the political prisoners' uh, issues. No? Uh, but I think we are moving forward insofar as the other substantive agreements are concerned. And I hope we stay focused as well on moving forward on these agreements. Well, uh, you know, yeah. the reconvening of the Joint Monitoring Committee is very important because okay. it's the mechanism of the agreement on human rights to see to it that the implementation is effective. That agreement is uh, one of a very high standard and so it would help very much the peace negotiation. Second, there's a commitment to accelerate uh, and sustain negotiations on social economic reforms and move on to political and constitutional reforms. But there is also the uh, worsening, deeply worsening economic crisis which renders the Filipino people subject to so much uh, suffering. Therefore, this, added, this adds to the urgency of carrying out these reforms under the present conditions. Yeah. And so, if there is the political will and commitment of both sides, these are uh, conditions which make it uh, more urgent, but also more of a challenge and more favorable to achieve these uh, results within uh, a reasonable time yeah. frame. And that's why we are, uh, again, re-emphasizing to Louis that we hope to do this as fast as we could so that they can help us as partners in trying to solve the problems instead of... Uh, it's important to, uh, uh, what um, uh, GPH panel chair said in the uh, preliminary talks last month that for the GPH, the Communist Party of the Philippines, the New People's Army, the National Democratic Front, are not considered by them as terrorists, as some foreign governments like the U.S. Uh, or the European Union had done. But rather, we have to see, as recognized also by GFP, GHP panel chairperson Alexander Padilla, that these forces played a very big and valiant role in the struggle against the Marcos dictatorship and against the Arroyo regime. So that should be recognized. Shall we take the, the, the last one? I think... Uh... Thank you. Yeah, I think it's okay. okay. Um, uh... May mga visit consultants pa, uh, uh, Panoy, um, uh, like for like the case of uh, Leo Velasco, uh, any statement? Well, you know, for the cases of NTF consultants who were disappeared, like Leo Velasco, Prudencio Calubin and his family, uh, Celine Palpa, uh, Gloria uh, Soko and Ariel Beloy, or also Rogelio Calubat and his son uh, Gabriel. This, the demand in my statement and in the position of the NDF, there should be justice given to them. There should be an independent investigation that should uh, bring justice to these people. Uh, also, there's the killing of Sotero Llamas and all these So that will be part of the discussions in the Joint Monitoring Committee. Mm. So Fidel Cavili and his committee and Chito Gascon, his committee will be taking this up, certainly. It's a very important uh, position, demand also, that has to be paid attention to because the families of these victims will also be asking what is the justice now? Uh, Leo Velasco was disappeared in February 
2007, when uh, Philip Alston was making his uh, uh, investigation in the Philippines, uh, uh, Prudencio Calubi and his family and group were disappeared in June 2006. So it's now already almost five years, four years. Five years tomorrow in the case of Leo Velasco. Well, uh, Leo Velasco, February 2007. Uh, February 2017. Uh, February, okay. Uh, yeah, let me just say you know, that all of this, of course, happened during the Arroyo regime. Government is not a monolith. Uh, as you know, we, the Aquino administration, in fact, tried to create or establish a truth commission, which was supposed to investigate and look into the crimes uh, or offenses of the Arroyo regime, which unfortunately was, uh, was decided to be unconstitutional by a Supreme Court that is actually appointed by the Arroyo regime. So, so again, uh, uh, we are trying to arrive at the truth of all of these uh, efforts, and we will ask all the help no, that we can get. But uh, you have to see also the Aquino regime in, for what it is. No? It's a government that is uh, uh, in the throes of a new, uh, being a new recent administration, trying to do what it can, trying to be, uh, no, but also limited no, in, many, in many ways. I think the JMC, uh, on the part of the NDFP Monitoring Committee, has suggested uh, independent and joint investigations with the support or participation of the Royal Norwegian Government, the International Committee of the Red Cross, possible. So it will be discussed now. Yeah, that's that part means of the agreement. It, it will be part of the agenda that has to be taken up. Uh, the, uh, the justice to be done for the disappeared and the ethnic consultants and their families, but also other disappeared uh, people. There are others, so, like uh, Jonas Burgos has disappeared for a long time. What about uh, uh, the two UP students and the uh, Filipino peasant uh, who disappeared? All of this. They may not be. They may not be a part of NDFT consultant. Oh, that they. Well, yeah. Merino. So this uh, this has to be taken up. Also. I think the joint monitoring committee will have uh, this task of uh, taking this up in the coming days, in the coming weeks. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, we said uh, to finish with the others now, so you have all to finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> they came, it has to be the same rules for everyone, you know? They came all the way from the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Last night. There will be other opportunities. Yeah. Thank you, sir.